To perform an exome or other targeted resequencing assembly, launch SeqMan Engine, then select Amplicon Gene Panel Exome from the NGS based variant analysis and resequencing workflows. Next, input your reference genome. You can add a local file such as a GenBank or FASTA, add files from the cloud, or download one of our genome template packages. If you have them, you can also import a VCF file or a BED file. Note that these files need to use the same genome version as what you've imported into the project. For this example, I'm going to import a bed file that defines the targeted regions in my sequencing project. Next, import your read data. Here you can import single samples or multiple samples, and you can also set up replicate sets if you have them. Here I'm loading FASTQ files from my local computer. But note that you can also load data from your DNA Star Cloud Data Drive account using the Add from Cloud button. I've loaded data from three samples, so the next step is to group them. To do this, I'll select the reads that are part of each sample, then click Group Selected, and name each experiment. Next, set a control experiment if you have one. I don't, so I'm going to skip this step. Then review assembly options. In most cases, these can be left at their default settings. In the analysis options screen, set your variant detection settings. And for human data, import the variant annotation database for enhanced variant annotation. You can also choose to detect CNVs or copy number variation during assembly. Now name your projects and set a project folder. Now review the assembly information and estimated requirements. Here SeqMan Engine estimates the memory and disk space required to complete your assemblies successfully. In this case, the disk space required exceeds what's available on my local computer. So SeqMan Engine is recommending that I run these assemblies on the cloud. Make sure you're logged into DNA Star Cloud Assemblies and then click Run for Assemblies on the Cloud. Or you can run the assembly locally on your computer if you have sufficient hardware. After assembly, files will be saved to your local computer. You can then analyze and compare variants in multiple samples using ArrayStar, or open assemblies for each sample individually in SeqMan Ultra to view assembly coverage, read alignment, and variants. In SeqMan Ultra, you'll see a list of contigs, in this case human chromosomes, that contain the exome alignment. Double-click on a contig to open the alignment view. You can then zoom out to view coverage along the chromosome, as well as annotated features on the reference sequence. Zoom in on a selection to investigate the alignment in more detail. Here you'll be able to see variants as well as features and coverage, and you can navigate to different areas of interest using the search tool. You can also see a list of variants by going to Variants, Show Variant Table. This table is interactive with the alignment view, so you can use it for navigation as well as filtering. For advanced variant analysis, filtering, and comparisons, open the project in ArrayStar. In ArrayStar, you can analyze variants and CNVs for all samples in the project. CNV data will be visible in the gene table, which displays RPKM values. Variant data is available in the SNP table, which shows the base call for each variant position in each sample, as well as dbSNP and other annotation information brought in from the Variant Annotation Database. Note in the called sequence, you can hover over a base call to see information about the assembly, including depth and quality score. This helps you distinguish between missing SNPs where there was no coverage and areas where there's coverage but no SNP. To filter variants and create sets, go to Filter, Filter All, then specify your search criteria. For example, let's say we want to find non-synonymous SNPs that are predicted to be damaging in the daughter. 
We'll change the criteria to look for SNPs in exactly one experiment, the daughter. Then choose SNP criteria. Here you'll see a variety of filtering criteria are available, including SNP information, statistical information about the assembly, and annotation data, which comes from the Thousand Genomes Project and multiple databases and prediction methods from DBNSFP, including population genetics, functional predictions, evolutionary information, and pathogenicity information. Here, we'll set the SNP translation to non-synonymous, and I'm going to set a minimum depth of 20. Then in functional prediction, we'll set the SIF score to damaging and add that filter to our set. Once you're satisfied with your filtering criteria, click search. You can quickly see we've narrowed this down to 62 variants. You can adjust these filters however you like. And once you're satisfied with the variant sets you've created, use this button to remember the results as a variant set. You can then repeat these steps for as many sets as you like. In this case, I've already created numerous sets. You can then compare these sets using Venn diagrams.